The colon is divided into several areas. From proximal to distal, we have the cecum, which has the widest diameter of any part of the colon. Then we have the ascending colon. Then moving more distally and superiorly, we reach the hepatic flexure that lies just inferior to the liver. And it's at this point that the transverse colon begins. The transverse colon continues until we reach the splenic flexure, at which point the descending colon commences. This continues to form the sigmoid colon, which has its characteristic S-shaped appearance. And this descends inferiorly into the pelvis, at which point we reach the rectum. Taking a closer look at the bowel wall, you can appreciate four distinct layers. The innermost bowel layer is the mucosa. Then moving outwards, we have the submucosa. Then the muscularis propria layer. And finally, we have the outermost layer, which is the serosa. Now looking at the blood supply to the colon and rectum, starting with the arterial supply first, the majority of the colon receives its blood supply via branches of the superior mesenteric artery, which supplies the proximal two-thirds of the colon. And then we have the inferior mesenteric artery, which supplies the distal one-third of the colon, including the upper two-thirds of the rectum. The inferior third of the rectum is slightly different in that it's supplied by the inferior rectal artery, which is a branch of the internal pudendal artery. The venous drainage of the colon and rectum significantly mirrors that of the arterial supply, in that the majority of the colon and the superior rectum is drained by the superior mesenteric and the inferior mesenteric vein, respectively. These two veins join, along with the splenic vein, to form the portal vein, which drains directly into the liver. As with the arterial supply, the lower part of the rectum is also different when it comes to the venous drainage, in that the middle and lower rectal veins drain into the internal iliac and the internal pudendal veins. It's important to appreciate the venous drainage of the colon and rectum, as this can help us understand the characteristic sites where distant metastasis of colorectal cancer may occur. Another important aspect which can determine the site of distant metastases is the lymphatic drainage of the large bowel. The proximal two-thirds of the colon drain into either the ileocolic, right colic, or the middle colic nodes, before then continuing to drain into the superior mesenteric nodes. The distal one-third of the colon and the upper rectum drain into the inferior mesenteric nodes via either the left colic or the sigmoid nodes, depending upon the anatomical location. The inferior two-thirds of the rectum do not drain into the inferior mesenteric nodes, and instead they drain into the internal and external iliac lymph nodes. So you can see how the significant mirroring in terms of the names and locations of these lymph nodes to that which we see with the blood supply to the large bowel.